Welcome to Sculpture Studios. Earlier this year, we made a giant dinosaur footprint that was stomping into the paving slabs of London's Leicester Square for the Walking with Dinosaurs premiere. With this project, we're sticking with this oversized theme and we're creating a giant coconut crash landing into the ground. Pip Brook from Vita Coco contacted us, looking to get a giant piece of sculpture made to promote their coconut water beverage. The whole falling coconuts idea was taken and blown up to create an eye-catching piece of art. We began by working out how the rubble around the edge of the coconut would break down and fit together, and how the coconut would be pitched slightly on an axis, with two straws added, much like their coconut on their drink cartons. With an object of this kind of size, it's surprising how much polystyrene is actually needed. So we stocked up with large billets, ready to block out the full 8 foot coconut form. We mark out onto the polystyrene with a semicircular template and we cut it using a hot wire. All of these pieces are then stacked up to create the cylindrical block of the coconut. This is all then foamed together, but the whole sculpture is kept in two halves so that we can divide it and manage it once it's all been cut. With a rough side profile pattern, we're doing a total of eight cuts from eight points around the clock of the coconut to get the cubist form. This is just creating a basic overall shape to save having to carve back from this single giant piece. The hot wire takes off the bulk material much faster. Naturally when cutting a round shape like this, there's always going to be a lot of waste material, but we'll utilise this later on in the project and use all of these off cut pieces to form the rubble around the base, so nothing will get wasted. As we're rotating it here, you can see how the coconut's kept in two sections, so it can be temporarily joined for carving, and then split later on for a hollow tube to be cut from the inside. Aidan then goes to work with the carving process, taking off all the flats and creating a more organic shape. He's using a variety of nail and wire brushes, like he does with the rest of his polystyrene carving, and a few of these tools are of his own design. He creates his own for better grip, more surface area coverage, and an easier carving technique for longer durations of time. He's creating a shape that isn't perfectly round, with dips and bulbous areas like the majority of fruits would have. Later on, once the carving's all complete, he'll cut a cheese wedge-like shape out of the bottom to make the coconut sit at a slight angle. Aiden's now going to give you a little bit of an insight and a bit of depth of his knowledge in polystyrene carving from his collective experience of over 20 years in the industry. Better than going to the gym. Truer words of wisdom never been spoken. With all the off-cut pieces, the base is now starting to take form. We've mapped out a rough perimeter, and using the sections of polystyrene to fill this space, we work from the lower ground level all the way up to the coconut. Here we've cut a semicircle in the core of the fruit, so that potential metalwork can be added later on site. Not knowing where exactly the sculpture was going to be placed, we created a rubble type landscape, as opposed to simply paving slabs or grassy areas. We're adding bolder concrete type rocks, and leaving areas where it looks as though the earth below has been displaced. With all the carving finished, the whole coconut is then sanded down nice and smooth, and we go over with a sticky back foil. We often get questions about this part of the process, what we're using and why, and it's simply a sticky back foil barrier that needs to cover every square inch of the polystyrene with no breaches to protect it from the resin burning through. Alternatively, like we used to do in the old days, you can use a PVA glue layer. We go over the whole thing with a build-up of 4 ounce mat so it's nice and strong, and it's weather resistant for outside use. We do exactly the same with the polystyrene base, and here you can see we're creating a baseboard that fits each base section exactly so it can be moved around without getting damaged. As this matches the entire perimeter, you shouldn't be able to see the baseboard once it's laid down. It takes a surprising amount of time to get all of this covered, and to ensure that the whole surface area is strong and protected. Next we've adapted and created our own blend of concrete mix for a spray on lightweight finish with a lot of texture. This is applied straight onto the glass fibre and it's really to get rid of that matte surface look and provides a nice solid base to then start art working onto. 
This dries in a few hours, and is helped along with a nice breeze and a bit of natural sunshine, so it's always lucky when we've got good weather for this. The cleaning up comes next, and this is always an arduous task of sanding down, filling and re-sanding again and again. We're correcting any unwanted imperfections, but here you can see intended imperfections that we're adding ourselves. We're adding blemishes and damage to the skin of the coconut that you might find on the real thing, as the surface of a real fruit is very rarely perfect. We've always thought that it's these small additional details that really make the difference between just an exaggerated prop and a real larger than life piece of art. On with the painting, we're going over with a yellow base layer first, both for the intended colour, as well as to have a yellow base for the coconut if the surface is ever scratched or damaged. Aiden then airbrushes different shades of green over the top, working from a small model reference that the client sent. Towards the top, where the coconut looks like it's been cut by a big machete, we're leaving a kind of fleshy cream colour to show the inside of the fruit. At the very top, where the centre hole is, we're going to be installing two female tubes that will allow long plastic straws to be added and removed easily for transportation. These are sprayed to match the concept image of the cartons, and everything is sealed with a lacquer, as it's going to be going outside. We experimented with different kinds of textures to add to the base, and we created our own mix of sand, pebbles and various grades of grit to add with a resin glue that will bond to the base itself. This is added everywhere that doesn't look like rubble, as though it's the earth below. Here you can see we're making up the join lines, with plastic dividers in between, so that we can match the texture up and create a really tight seam. Once all the texturing is complete and the artwork is finished, we offer everything back up and put the coconut in the centre, to make sure that the grit we've just added doesn't touch and scratch the paint. In order to install the straws, we're creating our own manual hole cutter here, at the exact diameter we need. We're trying and testing this on the floor, so we know it's going to work when we get on top of the sculpture, cut straight into the poly at the desired angle. Aidan's now going to talk you through some of the installation process and how the whole piece is put together. Well, what we're just doing here is making sure it all butts up together quite closely and it fits the peripheral of the, uh, of the coconut itself. We just make it good, any little areas which we see don't quite work. Uh, and in terms of putting it together, this is always going to be the front. This is going to be number one. You position this on the floor first, and then the coconut pushes in and matches up to these two dots here. One, two. It cushions up very slowly with little pads, so it touches, and then that's number one in place. You get it to where you want it in the shopping centre. And then you offer number two up, slide it in carefully, make sure it's touched, and make sure the two dots don't move. Offer number three, offer number four, but if you walk around, you can see it's all fairly tight. All right, actually, it's lovely and tight, so you'll be hard pushed. Number two join, connecting to number three. Everything else just pushes up nice and slowly, so you don't have to touch the coconut at all. There's enough shadow and depth. We're going to put some sponge in there, so it just cushions lovely around the whole thing. And number four, again, a lovely join. Just push it nice and snug, and he can connect it, or Greg can connect it like, as he wants. Uh, so yeah, looks lovely. The poles come in and out, and they just slide into tubes, into poles, and for transportation, they take the whole thing out, and it's all settled down. So it should look really good. Strong, kids can climb on there, but it's rough enough so kids don't play too much on it as well. So yeah, it's nice. We go round and dry brush the stone, adding finishing touches to the artwork, and soft foam pads that allow the coconut to push up against the base without getting damaged. It was tricky work trying to secure something this big that wants to roll around on the lorry, but we got there in the end, and the whole piece was taken away to be set up in various locations around the UK. From what we heard there was going to be metalwork made to fit both inside the sculpture and a cage that surrounds the piece for safer transport. Here's a picture of the team that worked hard on this job to get it all finished in time. Believe it or not, it was made within three weeks, and here's a final shot of the piece in our studio before collection. I did a bit of hunting around a few weeks later 
to find out how the coconut was getting on, and found these images online of the sculpture in full glory crash landing into the ground. We'd like to thank Pip from Vita Coco for this project, and we hope the piece had the desired effect on the public when out in the advertising world. Please feel free to leave any comments below, as they're always appreciated, and hit the subscribe button for our latest videos. You can like Sculpture Studios on Facebook, and for more of our work, visit sculpturestudios.co.uk. Thank you very much for watching.